Hey, what's up guys, Jakey here. Today, I'm gonna to be going over the best settings for CS2 for performance, as well as just to get a competitive advantage. So let's get right into it. So starting off with the video settings here, we're gonna start with the uh, resolution. Resolution is completely personal preference, whether you play four by three stretched or 16 by nine native resolution is completely up to you. Uh, I play four by three, 1280 by 960 stretched. The disadvantage with stretch is that it will cut off the sides of your peripheral vision, so you lose a little bit of that FOV. But the advantage of stretch is that it will stretch out the player models and UI, unlike Valorant, where it has a locked FOV in Valorant. CSGO's FOV is not locked. Uh, with 16x9, the player models are going to be you know, normal, just small, but you're going to have that peripheral vision is the advantage you get with 1920. So it's really up to you what resolution you play. Moving on to display mode, I always recommend with any game, that you play competitively, you want to make sure it's set to full screen. This will give you the least amount of input lag and the fastest response time. So you always want to make sure that you play on full screen. As for refresh rate, obviously you want to set this to your monitor's highest refresh rate. One quirk right now in Counter-Strike is that if you change your resolution, it will actually reset your refresh rate to 60 Hertz. So you want to make sure you go back in here and change it to the highest if you're changing your resolution. As for brightness, I like to leave my brightness around 83%. Around 80 to 90% is where I leave my brightness um, because I feel like CS2 is a little bit bright, a little bit, a little bit too bright when it's set to 100%. So I like to set it to around 83%. You can also change this with the console command. The console command for this is R underscore full screen gamma. Uh, right now I have it set to 2.5, which is 83%. And I think around 2 or 2.1 is 100%. So you can mess around with this and see what you like in terms of the gamma. All right, guys, moving on to the advanced video tab. We're going to start with the boost player contrast. You want to make sure you set this to enabled. This will make players in dark areas as well as far away. Like this will make players a lot easier to spot in those situations where they're sort of in like dark areas. So you always want to make sure that you set this to enabled. Moving on to vertical sync, you always want to make sure you disable vertical sync. This can mess with your FPS uh, and will also increase input lag. So if don't use vertical sync, make sure you disable this. Moving down to multi-sampling anti-aliasing mode. This is one of those settings I always recommend you play on at least 2x. If you're on a bad PC or you're on a lower end PC, you want to at least make sure to play on 2x. If you really, really can't, then you can set this to none. But the reason why you want to make sure you want to play on 2x is because this setting will make your game look a lot better uh, in terms of the jagged edges, like on the guns, player models, even buildings. You want to make sure you set this to 2x so that it smooths out all those jagged edges and it makes your game look a lot better. I recommend 4x if you have a decent PC. Like if you have just an above average PC or average or above average PC, then make sure you set this to 4x. Uh, but if you're on a lower end PC, then try to at least go for 2x if you really can't. You can set this to none but this is one of those settings that make your game look a lot better moving on to global shadow quality with cs2 shadows are actually a big advantage uh, player models cast shadows on the ground and you can spot those on the ground before you even see their player model so i would recommend you play on high or medium if you have a decent pc play on high if you have a lower end pc play on medium uh, if you set this to low i would try to stay away from low but again if you need the most FPS, you can set this to low, but I would recommend at least medium or high. Moving on to model texture detail. This is personal preference. If you want your game looking a little bit better, I would set this to high. It makes your gun, de uh, the gun details, texture details on the player models look a little bit better. So set this to high or medium if you want your game to look nice. If you really don't care about that, you can set it to low. Same thing goes for texture filtering mode. This makes the, uh, the gun skins look a little bit better and the textures look a little bit sharper as well. So. Uh, I would recommend 4x or 2x, but again, if you don't care about this and you just want the most amount of FPS, then you can set it to bilinear, but this really doesn't impact your performance too much, so you can really put this on 2x or 4x just to make your game look a little bit nicer while you play. Shader detail and particle detail, these really don't give any competitive advantage whatsoever, and so in order to get the most FPS, I would just recommend setting both of these to low. Same thing goes for ambient occlusion, this doesn't give any tactical advantage whatsoever in game. So you can set this to disabled and give yourself a nice little FPS boost. Moving on to high dynamic range. This is actually one setting that you want to make sure you set to quality. Try to stay away from performance uh, unless you really, really need the extra FPS. I would re recommend leaving this on quality because on performance, it really puts uh, a sort of like a weird film grain over your game. So it makes it pretty hard to look at 
makes it pretty disgusting to be honest. So if you can, make sure you put this on quality. Moving on to Fidelity FX Super Resolution, this does some weird uh, upscaling with your rendering resolution. So you want to make sure you set this to disabled because we don't want our game like bouncing between different rendering resolutions. We want it staying on the same one. Uh, so I would just recommend leaving this on disabled. And the last setting here, NVIDIA Reflex Low Latency. I recommend for most people, you're going to want to set this to Enabled Plus Boost. If you're having issues with Enabled Plus Boost, such as stuttering or any other type of weird issues, you can change this to Enabled and see if that fixes your issues. I would try to stay away from Disabled. For most people, you're going to be on Enabled Plus Boost or Enabled. All right, guys, moving on to the HUD Edge Positions. This is completely personal preference. This pretty much changes where your health and stuff is going to be positioned on your screen like your UI. So right now this is default with it at the very edge. If you change this setting, let's say I move everything in towards the center of my screen. This is basically what it looks like. It just pushes all of those UI elements towards the center of your screen. So this is all personal preference. I, I like to play with it on the default. Moving on to the audio settings, going down to the EQ profile, you can read all of, the all of the descriptions here for every preset. You have natural, crisp, and smooth. I like playing on just the default natural setting, but I know a lot of people say that crisp sounds a lot better, so it's really up to you. You can try all three of these and see which one sounds the best to you. But your audio setting here is pretty much going to be personal preference. Same thing for the left-right isolation. What this does is it takes sounds from the middle and then it pushes it to the left and right of your headphones. The higher you have the setting, the more aggressive it's going to be at pushing those sounds to the left and right of your headset. So it's really up to you what you use. If you want to try messing around with the setting, I would recommend starting with it on 50% and then you can go either up or down depending on what you like. Moving down to perspective correction, I recommend leaving this on yes, which is the default. And then moving down, these are all personal preference. Streamline push to talk might be something you want to mess around with. If you're having issues where your mic is cutting out while you're calming to your teammates, if you're cutting out early or your mic isn't catching the first couple words that you're saying, or if you get stuttering whenever you press your push to talk, this might be one setting that you want to change. So if you're having stuttering or it's cutting out whenever you're speaking, try changing the setting to yes. In the music section, I would recommend turning all of these to 0% except for the 10 second warning volume. The 10 second warning volume is pretty important to know when the spike uh, is diffusible if you don't have a kit. So I would recommend leaving this on and however loud you want it is up to you. You can also turn on MVP volume if you like hearing the music at the end of the round as well. But the 10 second volume uh, is something that you have to leave on no matter what. Moving over to the game tab, pretty much everything in the game tab is personal preference. The max acceptable match ping is going to be uh, when you're queuing for matchmaking, this will try to find servers that are under this ping for you. So if you're playing with friends and you're finding that your queue times are a little bit too long, you can try to change this and make it a little bit higher. You can get everyone in your party to raise this value and it should find servers that are further away from you. Moving down to the max acceptable game traffic bandwidth. You want to make sure that you set this to unrestricted for most people. If you have decent internet, you're always going to want to choose unrestricted. The only reason you would choose anything under unrestricted is if you're having rubber banding issues or you have really slow internet, then you can play around with these settings. But for most people, you're going to want to put this to unrestricted for the best performance. Moving on, everything else here is personal preference, except for the radar settings. So for radar settings, you want to make sure you choose something that you're able to see most of the map. So you can see here with my radar settings, I'm pretty much able to see most of Mirage, except for a little bit of back of uh, B site, which is, which is fine. But for the most part, I can see the whole map so I can know what's going on at all times around me. And these are my radar settings if you want to copy those. And that's pretty much it, guys. Those are the best in-game settings for CS2. If you guys want another guide on how to set up an auto exec and the best commands to put in an auto exec, I can make a video on that as well. Make sure you leave a like, comment, and subscribe to let me know if you want an auto exec video. That's pretty much it, guys. I will see you in the next one. Peace.